Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of our All the Mods 10 Mod Pack playthrough. Hope today's going swell and well for you so far. As for me, well, I guess it's another day with the bees. So yeah, it's 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 going well. Um, anyways, without further ado, let's dive into another episode. So yes, um, quite a bit of time has passed in between episodes, that doesn't mean that I haven't been playing on the world, and of course, um, upgrading, updating, and making more, uh, mechanisms, or whatever you want to call it, structures, objects. <laughs> so in that time, what I've done is essentially transformed this island, maybe I could do a quick little before and after shot here, that'd be kind of cool, a little wipey thing, I'm not sure. Um, we'll see if I get to it in post. Anyways, this is our new B setup. Of course, we had this back over at the house, but one, it's just kind of chilling in our backyard, which is, um, well, a little ugly. I'm not gonna lie. It served its purpose and it, it looked good for the time. But if if I wanted to do this, either one of these setups with as many bees as what I'll need, uh, it's just, it's gonna get a bit overwhelming, especially over there. So I cleared this island out, completely flattened it, Decided this wasn't going to be enough space for us either, and so I've pretty much just been using that for breeding purposes. Um, and then I went and built this. This is the ultimate bee resource generating um, room. <laughs> You'll notice most of these are not filled in. It's because I've been too lazy to pull those bees over here, um, or really get some of the ones that I know I need going um, to really get those going. So the way that the setup works, um, this is sort of a side sidebar view, um, front view. You got an oak expansion box, an advanced oak beehive inside here. You really just need the simulator. Um, and if you wanna cage your bees in, you don't even need the simulator, but you save a whole lot of space being able to put all of these things side by side. And I mean, honestly, once you have a uh, blaze spawner at your disposal, and you have the ender bees, which you need in order to get diamonds anyways, then you're you're good to go. So, um, one other thing that's really nice with bees is uh, they actually have cross mod compatibility, at least in this mod pack. I don't know about all of them, but essentially what that means is we have bees that can produce power stuff. So you'll see here we have niotic, spirited, um, what's this one? Energized, <laughs> and of course, blazing crystal. So that's really nice because it makes getting into power and or power uh, really simple and it makes building these generators even more simple. And these generators generate roughly 100,000 um, FE per tick. So yeah, we're, we're doing we're doing okay on power, I would, I would say. Power, whatever you want to call it. Um, our player transmitter, I went ahead and upgraded it to a niotic so it can transfer um maximum 100,000 fe per tick which you know generally doesn't really need to um and everything's staying pretty well caught up obviously it goes down a little bit here but then this sort of just refills it now why is this not extracting from this actually that is that is a problem these should both be on the same system so why does this say 800 and this says 400 that doesn't make any sense does it okay so that's charging this should also be charging how much power does it take for us to fly i wonder so this is going up these should be the same power level for some reason, this one's showing up 400,000 less. Okay, so that's back up to 100 million. Is this going to start gaining over 400,000? Yeah, but not that fast. What's uh, going on with this thing, huh? Because I'm not using power like that anymore, I don't believe. Let's try breaking this, and we will just uh, replace it on here. Oh, that went up another 
400,000. Let me try it on this. Something's not right because it's not extracting from here as it should be. This isn't showing up right. There's got to be some kind of bug with this going on. Anyways, <laughs> as long as we don't run out of power, I guess I don't really care. Um, but yeah, that's 200,000 FE per tick being generated, plus however much we were generating before, which honestly compared to 200,000, pretty negligible. Um, so we do have emerald set up, we have gold, we have iron, even though, you know, iron and gold we're getting from our um, modern industrialization setup. But I figured, you know what, we need those bees anyways for a lot of the breeding for these other bees. Um, might as well just go ahead and incorporate it into the system. So... We have our raw forms here, and this is basically everything that we're generating with the bees, everything from blaze powder all the way down to steel. And that is another thing with the bees is most resources that you would want to have duplicates of, like your intro, right? So you can get into extended AE. There's a bee for that. Refined obsidian for mechanism. There's a bee for that. It's uh, it's pretty insane. Steel for like fucking every mod, sorry, language, whatever. <laughs> for every mod ever you know because every mod is like here's steel for some reason ancient bees this was a fun one to get us netherite um blaze bees blaze bees however you want to call that for the powder skulk bees we did go and kill the wither uh or the wither the um what's the other one w warden uh and so yeah we got into the eclipse alloy and we got ourselves an eclipse alloy bee which is Probably some of the uh, the stronger stuff, like power and just dire uh, things. Having bees is like really, really strong because it means you can get a full set of Eclipse armor for, you know, practically free. And it also means that you can power it when your system's running. Why is this going to hell? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Because this isn't draining it like that, you know? Uh, it's not going up by the fucking 90,000 that this can, or 400,000 that it can extract. I wonder... I wonder... Let's get some cables out here. We'll get the spirited cables. And I'm just going to try and connect everything through cabling. Let's put this up here. Bring this down. Bring this down. It's still not charging. Alright. Let's do push. Let's do pull. Now it's full up. Is it just because it kept trying to pull energy from this and put it back into the reactor? Because that makes no damn sense. Okay? Makes... No damn sense. Um, up, we want it to extract. We want to extract upwards. Now, if I do this, how are we looking? Pretty, pretty chill. Pretty tight. All right. And so you, I guess you're not really working. Let's just go ahead and get the same setup going. That push, pull, cool. Now, we should be maintaining power pretty well now. Um, so, yeah, we went and fought the Warden. It's just one of those things that's like, you, you guys and gals have probably seen it a million times, and especially in modded, it's just, it's not that big of a deal. So, I don't, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't feel like doing the things on camera that take five years and aren't that exciting. Like, uh, you know, the dragon fight's fast, and so that's why it's fun. We need to get bees, whatever. The wither. Well, usually by the time we fight that, it's pretty fast. The Warden, it's never fast. It's never a fast fight with the Warden unless you have Project E and you just walk up with your guitar and, you know, watching. <laughs> um, anyway, so it, it was as you would expect from a Warden fight. Lots of, lots of wool, some arrows. Uh, one thing I will say, so obviously we have creative flight from our... Uh, chest plate now, which in case you're wondering about that, you could at just dire things right about here. It says upgrade flight, and all you need for this is some phantom membranes, some feathers, so very cheap here. 
Uh, blank upgrade base, also pretty cheap. You just need some Ferrocore, which there's a bit of a problem going on with that stuff right now, so I'll get into that. And then just two end crystals, so you're really, really cheap, honestly, for the power of creative flight. And I'm not quite sure how much energy it drains, maybe just 100 um, per tick, but that doesn't seem right, you know? Or a uh, 1,000, 100, something like that. I don't know. But uh, our, our power, when it's routed correctly, keeps up with it, so it, it doesn't really matter, you know? Um, that being said, the Celesta gem stuff is still really good, and it allows you to do a lot of stuff, like negate fall damage, so I probably should have done this much sooner, um, just to move up to the Celesta gem. Run walk speed, this will also affect your fly speed, so it's really nice, because generally... You'll get speed boost, but it's for running. And then you're like, well, that's great and all, but now I'm flying everywhere. And, you know, I'll run faster than I'll fly, but I want to fly because you can ignore terrain difficulties or whatever. So it's usually a back and forth, but Dyer has thought of this and has made it to where you fly, um, I think, just as fast as you run. So, yeah. Why am I throwing out bones? Yeah, if, you know, why not, I guess. Anyways, a good way to find the Warden is to use this Explorer's Compass. Um, it's not too difficult to make. You will need Netherite, which we've done that a couple episodes back. You'll need Enderium. Um, so Enderium ingots. Actually, you know what? Now that I say that, you can't get this until you go and you find a fucking Warden. I'm just now realizing, yeah, I made this to go into the Bumble Zone today because you have to have Echo Shards. Like, you can't even make this to go find the Warden. You have to find the Warden first. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, use this compass to go find the warden. It's not going to help you. I made this for the Bumble Zone, which I think the Bumble Zone also has its own um, compass. Yeah, it has the honey compass, but I don't want that. I want to go into the Bumble Zone and find the queen. I want to find the queen bee immediately. So if we can, if we can locate her chamber um, using the structure compass over the bee compass and then having to go find another compass to find the bee queen... Well, that's what I'm going to do. So, yeah, um, no luck there. But what you can do... <laughs> what you can do is use a nature's compass. This is the compass that you'll use. And you just look for deep dark. Now, obviously, sometimes it's not going to be an ancient city deep dark. It's just going to be a regular deep dark. You just got to keep trying that out. But this is pointing us, what, 1632 in that direction. This is pointing us 1597 in that direction. So obviously they're not linked up to the same deep dark biome, but I'm sure you could eventually work your way to one, you know, you just keep trying and, oh, fuck. Trying and failing. Um, and then the one key point that I wanted to make is when you go to fight the warden, you will more than likely, well, you definitely won't have creative flight yet because this is how you, you have it is through the dire wolf uh, armor. Your jetpack makes constant noise as you're flying with it. So if you're flying past Skulk Catalyst and, you know, what the, whatever the thing is are that send out the signal, is that the Catalyst? Or the Shriekers, the ones that alert them. Anyways, as you're flying around down there, you will, you will set them off, okay? You will alert the Warden, so be very cautious and conscious of the fact that uh, he can hear you. <laughs> you're not being sneaky, okay? Anyways, in between um, last time and this time, an update came that honestly I'm not too fond of, but you know, it is what it is. Um, the easy villagers mod got removed, so I, being a good boy and reading all the patch notes before updating my game, went in, got all my villagers out from the iron farms and the auto traders and everything, and I put them in a glass box and... Uh, yeah, they can go back to their jobs uh, later, I guess. <laughs> oh, you know what? One thing I didn't think about is if I had any in the chest in there, then they probably got deleted. Oh, well. Um, this is our new ME controller setup. It's There's nothing to it. I just wanted a multi-block controller because each one of these um, faces, if you will, can hold 32 channels. So it's like, oh, well, it's pretty good. And the wireless connector from Extended AE also works pretty well. Now this does consume some power usage based on how far away the, uh, you know, the distance between the two connectors are. But 
that being said, 300 FE per tick comparative to 200,000, it's, it's negligible, okay? And I know we're still drawing some also from the rest of the network, but again, I assure you, it's not, it's not going to affect us. And if it is, if it does, if it do, then it's going to be embarrassing if I can't do this, but we'll see. And what we'll do is we'll come in here and we'll say we want 36 more. Oh, you clay ball, you mother, you getting me on my clay balls. Anyways, um, you know, I got auto crafting set up for all of the reactors, which is something I highly recommend doing. You'll, of course, have to set up auto crafting for a lot of other mechanic or items, basically, such as the dielectric paste, the horizontal and the vertical um, rods. You'll need it for the dielectric casings. You'll probably want it on some uranite to keep your stuff going on the capacitors. Like you'll end up needing a lot of auto crafting recipes sort of pre-set up to make the reactors available. But once you do have it, I mean, it's really nice just saying, hey, print me out a hundred thousand FE per tick machine and then I'll just go fuel it, you know? So um, while we're down here, this is our general crafter as we know it, as we love it. This is where we're doing our... Uh, our reactor setups and all that kind of stuff. This is our brain. So all that's kind of been here. Then we have our extended a crystal assembler. Uh, can't view recipes from here. But it's essentially the... I'll explain this. The catalyst block to get into extended a. A lot of the recipes that you need for extended a come from this this block. That's like, you can't, you can't actually craft an extended pattern provider. You have to come into the crystal assembler and throw in the capacities and a pattern provider and, you know, all this kind of stuff. So, and that's where the intro um, ingots come in, right? As they start being used, actually, let me go back into here. Yeah, so they, they get used in these extended machine frames, as you saw but they also get used in these new processors, the concurrent processor. So you'll see here you have a brand new circuit and it works just the same as the rest, you know, as the gold and the diamond and all that. You have your press, you insert your item, in this case, the intro crystals, which is why I have the bees to help me with this. Um, and the actual concurrent press, now you won't be getting this from the mysterious cube that you get all the other presses from, but you can make this in a crystal assembler. So inscriber, intro, eye of ender, and the crystal assembler is made using extended, which you can make these by tossing it in world. So you don't have to have a crystal assembler to do this, but once you have enough of these, go ahead and make yourself one so you can um, get the concurrent press, right? Because you'll be needing this for Tons of other stuff. You can put in acceleration cards. That does work. It does help. And then, yeah, we just have our pattern providers to send into this thing whenever we need a recipe crafted. Over here, we have our power set up. Um, now, I'm pretty sure the only thing that we actually have being thrown into here is, yeah, uranite and blue ice. And that's literally just to power our power machines because now that we have the crystals you know, all the random upgrade bits here, infinitely generating through our bees. We don't really need to have those on a craft setup because they're they're always being crafted, um, which is kind of nice. It just takes out a lot of pattern space, I guess you could say. Um, one other thing that happened in between, I think this happened in between, backpacks got added. So ooh, we have sophisticated backpacks. I no longer have to use that dingy little personal barrel barrel from Mechanism. Although I will say somebody had recommended an occultism um, satchel that may have been a good alternative. But thankfully, I can stick with my tried and true backpack here. Um... Now, for upgrades, I do just have a simple magnet upgrade, which I've turned off because I hate it when my backpack gets filled up with a bunch of uh, random nonsense, which it's, it's starting to get there, but not, not quite. And then I have the advanced feeding upgrade, which allows me to always stay fed off of a stack of baked potatoes, which honestly, I need to go back upstairs and uh, I think I have some more yeah, waiting on me. Let's throw those in there. There we are. We should be good on food for quite some time. 
Um, now, one other thing, since sophisticated storage and sophisticated backpacks get added, it allows us to get these nice big diamond chests. And of course, you can double them up for a ton amount of space. And then if you add the stack upgrade, right, tier four stack upgrade, you can really jam these in. You can see here, just in this one space, we have 280 Sky Stone just chilling in this chest. So this is a good way of alleviating a lot of pressure off of your ME drives. You'll see here that my numbers have actually started to go down. And that is because I have the priority set to higher on this. So it's set to three, meaning whenever we pull stuff out of our system, if it's over here, it'll come out. And then whenever we re-put it in, it'll actually go back in over here. Now, the purpose of this is because, well, one, this can hold a lot more types of items as opposed to that. That being said, it's kind of limited because the stacks of items that it can hold are limited. But when you do something like a tier four stack upgrade, then, I mean, it goes from 64 to whatever 64 times 16 is, which is like, you know, over 640. It's like 800 or some some kind of crazy stuff like that. Um, maybe 900. I don't know. It's It's been a while for math. And honestly, it, it's a pretty late night for me. So, yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> Anyways, the point is you can set up a nice, large, multi-block sort of chest system. And then what you're going to want to use is the storage controller from Sophisticated Storage. Slap an ME storage bus on that bad boy. Hook it back up into your system. And then all of these chests are part of our inventory. So what's something very unique? How about our jetpack? Let's take our jetpack out of that front chest and let's put it all the way in this back one. Now you'll notice when we come in here, I can go jetpack and it's still in there. If I come back and look in here, there it is. If I pull it out from here, boom, gone. And of course, if I put it back in, it probably popped up right there. <laughs> so um, the way that this works, so you have a good inclination and ideation of um, how the actual mechanic works, the storage controller is kind of like a storage controller from the drawers mod, not sophisticated drawers or functional storage or whatever the hell the new one is, where you can link them from a distance. This is like the classic drawer system. So every storage system that is connected to this is part of the system, right? So the this chest is directly connected to it. So that's it's part of the system. It can be read. And then every storage system basically that's touching that same one is also automatically connected so yeah that's basically how our uh how our new storage system works and of course you can always add more chests to these you can upgrade them to netherite um you can add in more stack upgrades right so if i wanted to add in another uh diamond or tier four stack upgrade then that multiplies it by another 16. Um, which obviously you start getting into some crazy numbers then. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of the stuff that has happened in between. There's our matter condenser so we can get singularities because these, of course, are going to be useful whenever you go to try and make the wireless setup kit for, uh, for actually linking your wireless uh, connectors here. And this one has 29 of 32 channels. So we'll probably have to split this off at some point in the future, in which case I uh, would literally just take this connector, move it there, get another connector, put it down here, and then we're good to go. Um, now, for the time being, this may seem a little more tedious because previously we just had one controller right here. and We could pull 32 from here and 32 from here instead of just the whole block accepting 32. But as we expand our base more and more, and as we do things kind of like the bees build, then it's nice not having to run wire all the way over there. Now, did I run wire all the way over there before having the bright idea of trying to do this? Yes. Yes, I did. But y'all know with me, it's, at least in Minecraft, um, some things are just kind of reactive. You do it and you're like, wow, that took, that took a long time. And I don't want that to take a long time again. So... Oh yeah, so you you probably see our our villagers are gone, and that's not because I broke them. They're they're just they're gone. 
they've left me. Anyways, um, I think that's just about everything that has happened in between episodes. We did the warden fight, we did more B stuff, I got two power reactors set up, we're flying around. Um, don't, I don't know of anything else that might could have happened. <clears throat> oh, so yeah, um, I mentioned it, but I just want to show y'all real quick. So here we have the shadow pose, shadow pulse goo, but for some reason it stopped working. Um, and one other thing to note is whenever you do this quest, where is it? Just our things. Whenever you make this, it's going to give you another one for free. Take it, take it. Because you can use this on the B on in order to get your Shadow Pulse B. That's not it. That's Quarry B. Um, so yeah, Shadow Pulse and then Eclipse Alloy B. Sorry, whatever. It's not a Shadow Pulse B. Uh, but honestly, it's probably better because then you can take this and turn it into more raw Eclipse, which is nice. It saves you a lot of... Um, Ancient debris, because ancient debris is what you use, or netherite, whatever you want to call it. Um, but that's essentially what you use to get the Eclipse alloy, generally. Quarry B is what I was going to use to get myself clay, so I didn't have to constantly go out and mine some more of it. But obviously, I've not gotten around to that. So, ladies and gentlemen, now that we're all caught up... Oh, um, one thing I did want to note, in case you are like me, and you're wondering, Hey, how do I get the skeletal bee? How do I get the zombie? Um... This is a decent little setup for it, which honestly I caught most of them by hand, but the fact that this catcher is also working is really nice. Um, the fact that we have like double the amount of zombies to skeletal bees is uh, not so nice, but it is what it is. Um, so essentially you'll need an advanced beehive. Um, so I have the oak ones here. The, they can be completely empty. You don't have to throw any upgrades into this. And then it has to be nighttime. So whenever it's nighttime, that'll randomly cause either a zombie or a skeletal bee to spawn. We have a catcher here, <clears throat> excuse me, with some bee cages in it. Uh, you can upgrade this, but, you know, I do it if you want to, I guess. <laughs> Obviously, we didn't upgrade it and we still got bees. So proof in point, you, you really, you just don't have to upgrade everything. Um, that should That should honestly be it. I'm pretty sure that's it. So today's episode, um, even though it's a little over halfway over already because, you know, we had a lot of stuff to catch up on. It's been a while since I've seen you. Um, do I have a waystone? I'm pretty sure I went around wrecking like a couple of those. I really don't have a waystone. That's, that's insane. Did I use them all? Obviously, we've been... Oh, I missed one down there. Oh, no, I didn't. I placed that one. Fuck. I placed that one. That's a mystery one. Let's go grab that one, shall we? Swamp. Yeah, no, I did that. All right, well, let's go grab this mystery waystone really quick. Um, It's even got a marker on it. Because, yeah, I want to go into the bumble zone today. That is my goal to get us our feet wet getting a little intro into the bumble zone and then next episode is when we uh we'll probably go through all the bees advancements the bee queens uh bee queens advancements and really focus on getting some royal honey or royal jelly honey or royal what is it called <laughs> royal jelly i had it right um, now, the main purpose for this is we can trade it back to the Bee Queen to get some really nice things like Heart of the Sea, um, Totems, which I'm not as concerned with, um, Nether Stars, right? Wither Roses. So you, you can get some really, really nice stuff. Primarily, I want the Wither Roses because we can use this with a... the fuck? Ah, <laughs> with a skeletal bee in order to get a withered bee. And of course, the withered bee is going to give us withered comb, which gives us a withered skull chip, which gives us wither skeleton skull total. So, yeah, that's that's kind of been my uh, objective and my goal and everything for a little bit now. Motherfucker, there's no waystone here. 
He just lied. He just outright lied. Anyways, um, so yeah, that's kind of been my objective for a while because I would like to get to a point where we're just slaying the wither, you know? I'm not sure what I want Nether Stars for, but that's, you know, that's generally a good start to the end as far as Minecraft goes. Nether Star, Beacons, Tier 4, Codebreaker, Jet Foods, don't need. Um... A cool looking hook for aquaculture, Archmage Spellbook. Oh, so much mining. Yondu arrow, that one sounds really, really cool. I ain't gonna lie to you. Arrows can hit multiple targets. Interesting. Insta break, dimension card. Oh, you know what? That's that is a good reason for us to want and need nether stars. Oh, and the upgrades for the, the bees as well. That's right. So, and nitro crystals. Can Is there a nitro B? Surely not, right? Like, they had to stop at a... No, there is. There is. How do you... To acquire this B, look up... Oh, right, right, right. I forgot for all these. You have to... You have to actually make the egg. So, for this one, you just need two spirited. Oh, that's going to be a little annoying. So, most of these bees haven't been that bad. The spirited bees, however, don't breed amongst themselves. You can't just easily duplicate them. The niotic ones, they do, but the spirited, they don't. So what we'll need to do... Let's see, where is... Here it is. Yeah, you see, I only got three of them before. What we'll need to do then is breed up more niotic bees, and then we can make more of the spirited bee spawn eggs. We just need two, really. And then we can get the nitro bee, which blazing crystal, spirited, block of nitro. That shouldn't be too difficult, right? You get 16 from each. Oh, that's a pain that took us. 16? I need 18. I need 18. Um, but it's fine, I guess, I suppose. Sure. Why does the species of bees can't breed amongst themselves? Yeah, I had a feeling that was going to be the case. Just wasn't, you know, kind of hoping against all hope. Anyways, actually, you know what? We're going to need... We're going to need three... Three sets of this. Two gets us to, what, 32? Okay. Because, yeah, we'll end up needing three blocks, so that way we can put, uh, put something in its feeding slab. Anyways, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's dive into the Bumble Zone. That is the point of today's episode, is for us to actually get in here and just explore, showcase um, some of the stuff. And I want to take some honey bottles with me. Because these are going to be hugely beneficial. And do I have the right helmet on? Bee nest? I do. Alright, so in order to get to the bumble zone, you just take a beehive. And you can either get a piston and push yourself in. Or you can get an ender pearl and lob yourself in. Um, now this bee structure should seem pretty familiar. This is the one from the, um, one from the thumbnail. There we go. Now, whenever you do that, whenever you feed one of these honeycomb brood blocks, um, some honey, you'll get this little special protection of the hive buff. And basically that just makes it to where the bees won't get pissed at you if you start doing random various things. You know what? That's really cool. I didn't realize um, Productive Bees went with this mod. Holy smokes. This might have been a really good way to get... What? Red Tail Bee. What the fuck does a Red Tail Bee do then? Red Shroom. Withered. Redstone. Redstone. Chris... Oh, fuck does this bee do? <laughs> what kind of bee are you? You're not even in, in the system, bro. Got an illegal bee out here. Any hosers and an enderman? How did you... Well, you know what? Actually, the enderman might make a little more sense. What do you got in here? Bee bread, bee stinger... 
Oh, what is this? Robert the baby bee. I mean, if I had 162 minutes growing time, come here, Robert. It's a little, a little crazy. I'll pick you up though. Don't worry, friend. Now you can actually take these bee stingers that you see in here. Oh, look at that. There's one of the compasses. I'm not going to take it unless, unless our compass doesn't work in here. Let's see. B house in the bumble zone. Can I have the search for the bumble? Nope. Okay. Search. Sort of names. Search for group. Search. Search for. Search for group. Can't do it. Okay. Well, now we're sorting by dimension, so that might make things easier. These are all overworld, overworld, overworld. Take this little bar. Overworld, world, world. Where are you, Bumble Zone? Oh, aha. Okay, so let's see. Bumble zone. Hive temple? That doesn't feel right. Ancient hoops, ancient shrine. No, no. Battle cubes, bee house. No. Dance floor, hanging garden, hive temple. Honey slab, ice monolith, overgrown flower, pollinated, throne pillar. It's got to be that one. It has to. Search. All right. Let's go find ourselves a queen, shall we? So that's actually really cool that Productive Bees um, works within here. And if I think I remember my, cor my memory serving me correctly... Um, you can also get some of the comb blocks from in here. So let's see what this is. Um, Blasby or Blazeby comb. So that's pretty cool. You can get some free blaze powder. And honestly, a decent reason for why you may want to come in here a little sooner. Magmatic, right? So a couple... A couple of different things here. We're 692 blocks. Oh, here's a little opening. You just gotta keep finding, finding the hole. Sounds a little dirty, but you guys and gals know what I mean. I take it this is the music room or a cafe or something. Oh shit. Hey, hey. Oh. Gloria the glowing bee. Okay, you are certainly glowing. You are certainly glowing. And Anna, the cannon bee. Oh, you just have... Oh, I'm so sorry. Y'all are changing in there. <laughs> Oops. Awkward. All right, so let's see. How close are we? 430. What kind of comb is this? Magmatic. Okay, since in a theme. Mm, that's, a, that's a solid wall there. See if we can't navigate ourselves around here. And there are a lot of really, really cool structures to be had and found. And here's the spiders. Oh shit, the spiders. Um, so you know, if you're someone that likes exploration, then by all means explore, build a base in here, because obviously this place is freaking huge and it's really, really unique. Aha. It is the throne room. Now, before I enter in there, just to be extra cautious, I want to be the bee. And where is... Aha. Hello, my queen. Wants limes, no bell. I'm not going to lie. I ain't going to trade that with you, but I'll give you some, some honey. And then she gives us back items, so that's really cool. I don't think... Yeah, wireless crafting isn't going to work because we're intradimensional. But basically, that's all there is to it. I just want to get some drops from her so we can see kind of how this mechanic is. And I just, I'm right-clicking her. We're getting, honestly, some pretty good experience. 
can't give you a poisonous potato. Yeah, honestly, this is decent enough experience to like refill your stuff with. So we got some beehive wax, stingers, honey crystal, honey crystal shards and honey crystals and a poisonous potato. And I believe you can give her different things in order to um, get different things. So let's take a look. Bee Queen Trades, 156 pages. Sorry, just dropped something on the floor. 156 pages? Are you kidding me? That is insane. I wonder if you can automate this. I don't really want to pick her up because that feels a little wrong. Like capturing her, you know? Um, but yeah. Maybe you can trade diamond blocks to her for a very low percent of getting, honestly, some pretty terrible stuff. Okay. Well, ladies and gents, we're here. Ooh, you can get gas tears from trading magma cream. This is certainly something that I should probably take more ganders at, because I'm assuming there's there might be some, some really good trades in here. Um, but it's not something I'm going to go fully through now on camera. Instead, I never got that fucking waystone. Are you kidding me? I never found another one. Can we make one? Ew. Certainly not without an inventory. Well, that's a shame, but I guess we'll, we'll just do the same thing. We'll just come right back to you, queen. So, um... Oh, you know what? I have a bucket. We can try this one thing real quick. Um, uh, can I not... I can't, like, get up in here. Unless I had a trap door... I don't have any wood for that. Well, you know what, Queen Bee? We will be back. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll harvest all the stuff. But this this is the Bumble Zone. It is a very cool dimension. Probably one of my favorite alternate dimensions. Y'all know I'm not, not generally a huge fan of alternate dimensions. I think they... They tend to lean too hard into one thing or another, but this is uh, this is really cool. It's really unique. It's got uh, some really cool like hidden hidden gems, if you will, within it. Um, so yeah, no, I, I really really enjoy what the the mod pack or the mod pack, what the mod devs have done with this with this mod here. So shout out to them for making good, just a good quality uh, mod, right? Just a, an all around fun thing to play with. I will say probably my least favorite thing with it is the Queen Bee um, advancement. So if you come into the Bumble Zone over here, this is the Queen Bee's desires, the Queen's desires. Essentially, this will continue to fill out Right, so right now, craft six bees' nests or beehives. Then we need to smash and kill 32 spiders, and then so on and so forth. Once we complete all of our quests, she will give us some royal jelly. So that's a way we can obtain it, and then we can, of course, use that to consume an essence of the bees, which essentially makes it to where they, they will stop hating us for um, living. So, you know, it's good in my book. Now, let's go on home because there is something that I would like to showcase to you guys and gals. Which, actually, you know what? Maybe I should have stayed in the f fucking bumble zone. Yeah, so no waste stone there. That's, uh... That kind of sucks. I wish I could remove that marker somehow. Some shape, form, fashion. I'm sure I can. I'm just being lazy with it. You know what? There's another village there. What is this? Ancient city. Yeah, I don't really want to go down into the ancient city. <laughs> Trial and deep dark. No. These may be villages. Let's go out to the ice um, spot real quick. And then 
That's a temple. That's not a village. But it looked like there were some villages over here. Is that another another meteor? Oh, well, um, your village got fucked. <laughs> uh, I don't see a waystone surviving that. So, oh, what kind of bee is that? You know, it's something whenever you get into bees, you should probably just get used to it. Come here. Reed bee. How about you? Are you also a reed bee? Reed, reed. Okay. What do these reed bees do? I'm nesting in reeds over the world. Now you're just basically for used for making other bees. Okay. No, no shame. No harm, no foul. Um, whatever. Maybe that's just a mason bee. Really? That uh, that village didn't have a single single waystone, huh? That sucks. That it got hit by a meteor. Oh, what about this one over here? Oh, I'm not gonna lie, it looks kind of more like a uh, bad guy territory. Oh yeah, this is definitely pillager stuff. This is not um Do y'all have a waystone though? Just curious. No, do not see one. Uh, uh, you know, uh, deuces. I guess we can just go slash home, huh? We don't have to fly all the way there. That'd be a pain in the ass. So yeah, Bumble Zone. It's a uh, it's a fun place, like I said. It's it's definitely got to be one of the more gorgeous um, dimensions you can actually see in it, which I really appreciate. I don't know why all these other dungeons or uh, dimensions decide that they have to make the visibility super low for some reason. I guess they're trying to overcompensate for ambiance. But uh, truly, truly good job on the Bumble Zone. Anyways, I feel like I was rambling there, so we're going to cut off um, past chance or we're going to let present chance take it away and say thank you all for watching i hope you did enjoy of course if you did please be sure to leave a like down below comment in the comment section um if you have any questions comments concerns tips tidbits pieces of advice life stories really anything you want to share you can share down there um this you know as long as it's just in text Thanks, everybody. Once again, if you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. Share this out with your mother, brother, sister, friend, cousin, stranger down the street, and neighbors that I'm sure, um, uh, you know, the joke fell through. It's fun. So neighbors, strangers, all that kind of stuff. Share it out if you want to share it out. As per the usual, I do hope you all stay safe, stay awesome, and stay crafting. Until next time, you beautiful, beautiful people. Peace out.